Let me tell you about the worst side hustle that I ever tried. And I've done basically all of them, all the major, you know, app based gigs in this side hustle economy. Now, this was a couple of years ago. I was living in San Diego, California. Now, I first started my side hustle right here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, late 2015. That was with Rideshare. Then I did food delivery. Again, I've done most all of this stuff in different niches. So, this gig, it required you to deal with those on-demand electric scooters. Do you have them in your city, in your marketplace? You know, you like stand up on it. It's got the handles. It's electric. It goes in astounding, I don't know, like 13, 14, 15 miles. pretty fast. Okay. And you zip around, boardwalk, downtown, neighborhoods, whatever it is. So it was for lime. It was being a lime juicer, they called it. Now, here's the thing. If you don't have scooter charge in your marketplace, still listen to this video because there's several things that I learned which made it the worst side hustle that I want you to avoid in 2023 or if you have something similar. So listen to this. So you're tasked with collecting these electric scooters, putting them in your vehicle, taking them home, plugging them in, having enough outlets and all that juice, put it in your garage, hopefully you have a garage, and then you deploy them the next morning, and it's gotta be by a certain time, like 7 a.m. in the morning, or get this, you don't get paid. So you have to be up super early and drop them off. It has to be done by 7 a.m. or at least at the time you didn't get paid. So here's what I learned on my journey of catching up on bills, making extra money. And actually I've done some of this stuff full time because I lost a job. So, and I actually asked you why you're side hustling. Over 2000 respondents, thank you for responding. We're a team here, consider subscribing. We'd love to have you part of the team here. But 52% of respondents said, yeah, they're catching up on bills bills and debt. Comment down below if you'd like to comment on this as well. 17% building capital for an investment or a business. That I love. Let's see if we can get that number to, I would over double it, like 40%. Because what I want to teach you in 2023 and beyond is, okay, once if it is bills and debt, and that's partly what I've done as well. I settled a like $7,800 credit bill that was overdue because of that whole job loss. I did a whole video. You can watch it. But using some of this extra money, if you're caught up on everything for something else, an investment, a business opportunity. So anyway, I was doing this thing, collecting these scooters, and it was paying $7 per scooter. Think about that. That whole process, is it, and they're pretty high. It's like, I don't know, like waist high scooter because it has those handles on it. Is is that worth it at seven dollars a scooter? Putting it in your ve- and these are, I mean, they're dirty. It's pretty heavy. It's metal. Putting it in your vehicle, can you situate that? Okay, for seven dollars, would it be worth it for six dollars, five dollars, four dollars? You see where this is going. The trend was decreasing pay, which clearly makes it less attractive as a side hustle. Here's takeaway number one for you. Now, there's a lot of volatility in this gig economy, a lot of volatility, which just means that these companies and apps can change things basically without warning. We can have a new terms of service come down the pipeline, even for the most popular apps, DoorDash, Uber Eats, and Uber actually does update with service addendums and pay addendums pretty frequently. This stuff happens. And then what happens if something becomes unattractive because of a pay change. Takeaway number two, you know, picking up and deploying all these scooters super early in the morning and then collecting them at night. Actually, I think they released maybe at 9 p.m. I'm thinking here that they were available, the green light to collect them at 9 p.m. And then you got to do all that stuff and deliver by 7 a.m. the next morning. I think you really have to look at with any of these side hustles, any side hustle, the cost benefit of what I'm making for that effort. And think about it. I'm going downtown. I'm picking up these things. I'm putting them in my vehicle. It's kind of damaging my vehicle as well because it's not really meant for that. And then I'm also doing it at night. I remember I did a video on this as well. We have a line playlist if you want to check it out. But quickly, I went to like a park, like, you know, recreational park at night. I went to a large sports complex, you know, fields, tennis courts and stuff and a park in that at night and basically no one's there except a few, you know, random cars. It makes you feel kind of weird. I picked up a scooter at a gas station. It was at the corner of the gas station in this like briar of bushes and like, I don't know, utility box or something. And there was a homeless person using that scooter for transportation. The scooter was deliberately hidden in those bushes. I had one where I felt really bad. I picked up the scooter from kids using it. 
And it's like, don't yell at me. All right. The way that this happens is it beeps, signaling that it's low battery. Now, it won't do that if someone's paying for it. And they're, you, know, you have to pay for it to use the thing to make it go. So these kids were just manually on it. So no one's paying for it. They just kind of propped it up and they're just kind of riding it manually, like pushing the thing. And it'll also beep when you're doing that as well because you're not supposed to do that. Kind of makes me feel like I know a lot of these app safety is number one. And I would say Rideshare is the number one app that makes me feel the most uncomfortable. I think you can agree with that. Having a stranger in your vehicle behind you in a very vulnerable position. And I've done a lot of Rideshare. Food delivery, it's like the lowest safety risk because it's, it's food delivery. There's nothing in your vehicle and package delivery, right? Because there's no one in your vehicle is just doing package delivery. And then lastly, a huge takeaway that really makes this the worst side hustle I've ever done with the decrease in pay, with the effort that's not worth it, with safety concerns, with just the layout of this, it was changing infrastructure. So listen to this. This is a little bit different than just change in pay. If something fundamentally changes of how a platform is run, it's changing the infrastructure. With Lime, and actually we saw this with Skip Scooters, Jump, which is owned by Uber. Comment down below, I can't remember. Bird Scooters. Comment down below, which which one? I think it's it was Bird Scooters. That Bird, another scooter company, there was a lot of them. It was kind of hot for those years. But anyway, they would also use independent contractor chargers and they to my knowledge got out of the business for independent contractors using rather employees that would be basically fleet management and that is what lime is and did do at the time they're moving away from independent contractors and then they also changed the format of just how to charge it versus we don't need you to charge it as much versus now we just need you to move it and redeploy it something else it's like move in place or whatever you know move and place not move in place move and place and they'll pay it for that but it's not as much as the traditional charging again changing the infrastructure of the platform so to review with these volatile gig apps i just want you to know that you shouldn't seed yourself really listen to this and drop a like on this video if you get value here and consider subscribing don't seed yourself too heavily into one side hustle don't put all your eggs in one basket doordash uber eats amazon flex walmart Spark, Instacart, Shipt, GoPuff, Rover, any of these things. Because if to review, pay changes, the infrastructure changes, the effort and the safety isn't really worth it. And you kind of realize that a little bit late because then you're stuck trying to scramble, trying to find something else. And hopefully for those 17% of you that did indicate you're using this money for an investment or a business opportunity, hopefully again, by the end of this year, we can really get that up to 40%. I really want your mindset to get into more wealth building. Obviously, you know, we need to pay the bills. We need to pay off debt first. That is is what I recommend. You know, get out from underneath credit card debt. I did a video on that as well. Check it out on some strategies to do that. But yeah, get out from underneath the debt or, you know, pay down loans faster, whatever it is. You don't have to be completely debt free. And this is just my opinion here, not financial advice, but you have some liquidity and some capital that we can use that for an actual asset that you can own that'll pay you. And then you don't necessarily have to have the heavy trading the time for the money like some of these gig apps. That's a and honestly, supplementing an investment portfolio. That is something that I've been big in is literally the first thing I did is I got out from underneath debt. I resolved that credit card debt. I settled it. I took the credit hit on that. Then I got out of a car loan payment. So I'm paying less interest on that. I'm paying down that principal, boom, pay that off. And then I do my thing, do my business here on YouTube, do my side hustle apps, get that liquidity in the capital, start to build up even stronger my, my investing portfolio. And then ultimately that next stage is investment property and assets. Drop a like on this video if you got value. You can also click or tap the screen here for my newest video, as well as a video recommended for you. And I'll see you in the next one.